Abraham's descendants, Cain and Yephes. Now we'll go through the idea of the descendants of Cain and actually all of Ham, all together, right? This, this is what happened. They are going to be subject to the descendants of Shem and Yephes. Now we'll go the idea of the descendants of Cain and actually all of Ham, all together, right? This, this is what happened. They are going to be subject to the descendants of shame and Yephes. Now we'll go through a little bit of history as well, right? But let's just let's just flush this out. So if we look at all of Ham's descendants, who do they represent? You're gonna say, well, they occupied Africa a tremendous amount of suffering. They didn't really deserve it. You know what what happened over here? Let's see. So if you look at his all his descendants, they represent enemies of the Jewish people one time or another in history. They didn't really deserve it. You know, what, what happened over here? Let's see. So if you look at his all his descendants, they represent enemies of the Jewish people one time or another in history. They didn't really deserve it. You know, what, what happened over here? Let's see. So if you look at his all his descendants, they represent enemies of the Jewish people one time or another in history. Either Israel's conquering them or being conquered by them. And who are these, these descendants of Ham? Who come from Ham? Egypt. The Egyptians. They are part of Ham. Also, the Philistines also come from Ham. Now, if we read through history, read through Jewish history, Philistines, major pain in the neck to the Jewish people, caused a lot of harm, you know, killed a lot of people. You know, the Jews also conquered them, you know, helped destroy them, you know, to a certain extent, but they also got conquered by them. Well, you know, Egypt, we know what happened. We know what happened to them. So now, now, what does it say? Blessed be God, the God of shame, and Canaan's going to be their slave. So something over here went majorly wrong. So shame's ancestors are going to take over the reign. They're going to take over authority for Noah's family, which means who does shame represent? Shame represents pretty much all mankind, right? So, so the blessing goes from who? Goes from Noah to Shame. Shame's going to represent, we're going to see who's going to come out of them, right? But they're going to, be, they're going to represent pretty much most of mankind. And then you have Yephes. What does the Torah say? May God enlarge Yephes. Let him dwell in the tents of shame. Let Canaan be his servant. So now Yephes, What's he dependent on? His relationship is dependent with shame. The descendants of Yephet are going to benefit because they got good relations with shame. And why? Because the Torah says they're going to dwell in the tents of shame. And Yephet is the branch of the family which would enlarge. Now, who comes out of Yephet? Yephet is Greece, right? It's going to be tremendous population of wealth. You got the Romans, the Greeks, most of Europe, most of the European peoples come out of Yephet. They're probably the ancestors of the early Americans, right? The American colonists, you know, and there was no greater time in history of the world that had such wealth, fruit, fruitfulness than what happened first in Rome, then, in, you know, Rome, Greece, even though not much left, you know, except some artifacts and some, you know, uh, you know, other things, you know, they did, they did bring a lot of things to the world. You know, they, they brought, you know, uh, you know, education, other things. You know, certainly to the world, but tremendous wealth they brought as well. So that's a huge blessing. But again, they're representing they're representing Rome, Greece, you know, and all of Europe. Now, the descendants of Canaan, in reality, were the offspring of Ham over here, were subject to Yephet's offspring, just like Shame's offspring, right? So there seems to be. It seems to be a pattern. It seems to be a pattern over here, right? And the and you know and again and again we see that Israel came came out of where Egypt, the Canaanites, the descendants of Ham bow down to the Israelites, right? Who are they descendant of? Shame. Noah's prophetic blessing sets us all into motion, and that should be when the Messiah comes. Right, so now, so now we have we have, you know, we, we have we have a whole thing over here. If you look at the descendants of Yephes, right, we're just gonna 
throw this out there as well, and then we'll come back, right? You see that it comes out from them is, is Kimmery from Goimer, were the first to settle in where in in uh, in England, I think, in Wales. The the, the Scythians, you know, from Magog. Who did they form? The Russian people. The Medes from Madai, right? The Greeks from Yavon. Thracians from Tyras, right? Became the Macedonians, who eventually came out of the Macedonians. One of the great greatest Macedonians of all times. Who do we have? Is Alexander the Great. And from these group of people came who? Came the Germans, the Celts, the Armenians, right? You also have in the line of Yefes Tarshish. Where is Tarshish today? Modern day Spain, right? You know, also mentioned in Isaiah. Now, you know, we look at all this. We look at all this and we see, you know, we see who's who. One of the things we didn't mention, which we'll mention now, it's not just about the nakedness that he uncovered. Some say, some say that Ham actually castrated Noah. Why? They want to have more kids. The nakedness that he uncovered. Some say, some say that Ham actually castrated Noah. Why? They want to have more kids. You know, they want to have more of an inheritance. So that obviously he woke up. He understood something happened over here, right? You know, and he, and he cursed him, right? And he cursed him, and he, cur- you know, and he cursed his descendants, right? So now we see, we see who the players are. So, you know, even if you want to tell me, well, their descendants, what did they do? They didn't deserve anything over here, but who came out of them? We got Egypt. We got the Philistines. We got the Canaanites. All people wanted to, wanted to destroy or try and destroy the, you know, the Jewish people. But out of shame of anything over here, but who came out of them? We got Egypt. We got the Philistines. We got the Canaanites. All people wanted to, wanted to destroy or try and destroy the, you know, the Jewish people. But out of shame and yet it comes out everybody else, right? It, it's a who's who of, you know, who comes out of, out of Yephes over here. Now, if we look at this whole thing, and now it's going to get a little bit dicey. Right, we're going to get a little bit dicey over here. What did the, the Torah says? The Torah says over here, we, we said before, I just want to quote it again, that the Torah says in Genesis chapter 9, verse 25, Curse is Canaan, a slave of slaves. He's going to be to his brother. Blessed to be the God of shame. Let Canaan be a slave to them. So, so Canaan is, uh, is going to be a slave to shame and yet. So, so Canaan is, uh, is going to be a slave to shame and Yephet. Now, so, so Canaan is, uh, is going to be a slave to shame and Yephet. Now, if the offspring, if the offspring of, of, of Ham, right, are going to be as we understand, right, are going to be, are going to be the races that occupied Africa. We understand, right, are going to be, are going to be the races that occupied Africa. We understand, right, are going to be, are going to be the races that occupied Africa. Right now. If we look at Africa today, people can say unbelievable sphere of influence, right? From, you know, from France, from other countries, you know, and totally enslave them. That's true. Who do they come from? Yefes. They come from Yephes over here, right? This is part of the curse. Now, if I didn't have these verses, if I didn't have these verses at all, where the Torah says one people, one nation, or whoever comes out of them is going to be a slave to the rest, of, seemingly to the rest of the world, right? One people, one nation, or whoever comes out of them is going to be a slave to the rest, of, seemingly to the rest of the world. Right? That's who Yephes is. That's, we just went through the genealogy. Right? Now, you know, people are going to rip this to shreds and say, yeah, come on. It happened because of this reason. That, there, there are 150 reasons 
why we could explain naturally, quote unquote, what happened in history and what happened to that continent. You could, you could say you could say a lot of different reasons: socioeconomic situations, they didn't educate them, they kept, you know they kept them enslaved, all, you know, all kinds of things, all kinds of things, right? Now, if we think about it, right, Europe, you know, Europe's had their day. Portugal, in the time of exploration, you know, of America and other places. They had the sphere of influence. England had the sphere of influence. Italy, Germany, other places. I don't know what necessarily Australia has done for the world. I don't have an answer for that, right? Canada's had their day. Certainly the U.S., you know, South America, you could argue. Whatever. Africa's been an absolute disaster. A disaster. Okay? Certainly the U.S., you know, South America, you could argue. Whatever. Africa's been an absolute disaster. A disaster. Famines and war, right? Probably, you know, not necessarily in that order. It, it, it's been an absolute disaster. Now, I would say like this. If you tell me there's no more sphere of influence, you know, England, you know, gets out. They don't colonize anymore. They leave. France leaves. Other countries who had any sphere of influence, they go out. Now, how long, how long would it take for a nation to get back on its feet. In general, 100 years, 150 years, 200 years. Now I'm throwing out numbers, right? I'm throwing out numbers. We know that, you know, the, the Greeks, the Romans, how long were they in power for? You know, they had power for 100 years, 70 years, you know, you know, a little more than that, you know, so they had power, and then their power went. And what happened to Rome? They got decadent. They got decadent, got destroyed, right? You know, too many, you know, uh, you know, too much sports, too many orgies, too many all kinds of things. Keep this, you know, PG thirteen. Yeah, too many terrible things. They got tremendously decadent, and that was it. You know, and they they destroyed themselves from within. You know, the Greeks got thrown out. You know, drawn out. You know, got the, got thrown out by. You know, certainly by the Jews. They were never the same afterwards. The Greek, you know, mighty Greek army, miracle of Hanukkah, they never the same. They had a tremendous sphere of influence. No question. We're still living in the Greek world today. That's a whole other discussion. We're still living in that type of world. So their influence is definitely seen. But I'm, but the, the point is, and again, you know, people people may rip this to shreds, right? But, the I, you know, how long does influence have to be over where a nation can be born, you know, can be, you know, can take the reins by themselves. Again, I would I would say, in my own opinion, you can take it for what it's worth, you know, I would say 100 years, 150 years, you know, so to speak, you know, 200 years. I mean, I think, this, I think that's a lot of time. I think it's a huge amount of time. I don't think it should take that long. I think it should take half that. But okay, you know, it's going to take time to build up. You're going to have to build up an economy, put people in power. They have to be educated. There are a lot of programs you're going to have to do. A lot of things. A lot of things you're going to have to do. But the country itself, you know, throughout the millennium, even you tell me, someone once told me, said, yeah, look at all the natural resources. Okay. There are a lot of natural resources there. Doesn't, you know, I'm, we're talking about power. We're, we're talking about people governing themselves, you know, living and having a sphere of influence. There. You know, I'm, we're talking about power. We're, we're talking about people governing themselves, you know, living and having a sphere of influence. Africa's never done that. It's the only nation in the world, only continent that really has never done that. Now, if I would just say that for the last for the last 50 minutes, right, or 40 or 40 minutes, whatever, and I didn't mention one thing from the you know from the Bible, didn't say anything from the Torah at all. You'd say, come on, these are big time races. He's saying they're not going to do anything. They're not going to go anywhere. And they're cursed forever, okay? Right? But this is what the Torah says. We believe in what the Torah says. But if I'm racist, he's saying they're not going to do anything. They're not going to go anywhere. And they're cursed forever, okay? Right? But this is what the Torah says. We believe in what the Torah says. Quickly collab with your colleagues by tagging team members directly in videos. It's easy to stay in sync and much more with Vimeo Central. But if I didn't, if, if I didn't have the Torah to tell me 
then someone is going to have to come up with a very, very good explanation and page upon page about what happened over here. You can tell me socioeconomic. You can tell me that. You know, you're going to tell me, oh, you know, over the years, weather's been horrible. <laughs> you know, they didn't have rain. There have been drought, major droughts. They didn't have rain. They didn't have food. Starvation, right? So you can tell me, you know, there, wars, uh, other things. You, you know, you can tell me all these things. The problem is at some point, I would think the tide should turn. That's what, that's what we would think. You know, in other nations, even if they had it bad and they had it real hard, you know, some of them, you know, reached a point of glory. You know, Portugal, no offense, and not a world power today. You know, even in soccer, football, whatever you want to call it. I don't, you know, okay, they sometimes do well, sometimes not. What have they done for the world the last 200 years? Not very much. They're not a world power. You know, you can talk about England. You know, they've been knocked down. You know, other places, all, you know, Italy's been a disaster. You know, since World War II, absolute disaster. So, you know, people have been knocked down. They build themselves up. You know, question is how much, what their level of sphere of influence is, right? You know, Russia over the years, what happened, how they conglomerated power and different things. You know, okay, you know, they have ups and downs. Everyone has ups and downs. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not. You know, you got world powers, you got sometimes they get weaker, okay. But if you have if you have a place that's never had anything, <laughs> nothing at all, it, you know you, you can't you can't keep saying oh th this happened and that happened and the other thing happened. You got to cut them a little bit of slack and say when do you say enough is enough? You know, I my personal opinion, 150 years should be enough to get the continent back on its feet. I think that's enough time. But you got to tell me, come on, they still had famines, they still had war, they still had other things. Logically, we're going we're gonna to go according to logic. Logically over here, it doesn't make any rational sense. You can tell me colonization up the gazoo, right, and, and all kinds of different things. Other things, logically, we're going we're gonna to go according to logic. Logically over here, it doesn't make any rational sense. You can tell me colonization up the gazoo. Right and other things logically we're gonna we're gonna go according to logic logically over here it doesn't make any rational sense you can tell me colonization up the gazoo right and, and all kinds of different things yeah right? you know that's true when did they finally stop I don't know the early 1900s you know okay so you had you had 120 years after that right or let let's say 100 years 100 years you know they're 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 educated. You know, they're taught how to run things, different things. I would think, okay, I'm not going to say it's going to be a world power, you know, per se, but it, it shouldn't be what it is. It definitely shouldn't be what it is, you know, almost the entire continent. It do, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to say, well, you know, you got South Africa, you know, you got a few other places here and there, you know, doing all right, you know, or doing somewhat all right. You know, they got their own problems there also. So without, you know, without any of this, we never come to such a conclusion because logically, and again, you know, the, the Torah doesn't have to be logical. 80% of the Torah doesn't make sense. The fact that Jewish people have survived throughout the millennium, we spoke about this once, went through all the programs throughout history, Jewish people should never be here, right? It, you know, it's illogical according to history. Now, this is also illogical, I would say. You know, we, you know the Torah would say. You know, it's, it's illogical except for the fact that the Torah says this is what's going to be, and it's not going to change. And seemingly, it's not. Gonna, we, you know, the Torah would say, you know, it's it's a logical except for the fact that the Torah says this is what's going to be, and it's not going to change. And seemingly, we, you know, the Torah would say, you know, it's it's a logical except for the fact that the Torah says this is what's going to be, and it's not going to change. And seemingly, it's not going to change. But now you're going to, we, you know, the Torah would say. You know, it's it's a logical except for the fact that the Torah says this is what's going to be, and it's not going to change. It seemingly it's not going to change, but now you're going to tell me. But there are people that overcome this. There are people who don't live in poverty. There are people, regular jobs, you know, that, you know, having families, you know, doing good things. Okay, is that possible? Possible. It's possible. At the same time, is it going to be a whole nation that's going to come out of it? No. Why not? There's only one reason. 
It's not because of effort. The reason is because this is what the Torah tells me. The Torah tells me clear as day. This is not going to change. Right? In general, it's not going to change. Now, again, if I didn't have this, I would say it doesn't make logical sense. Right? It doesn't make logical sense at all. I would say give it another 40, 50 years, and they, they should be over it. They should be over it already. That, that's what I would think. But the Torah doesn't tell me that. You know, and not only that, but they've been subjugated. They've been subjugated. They've been subjugated by the Jews. They've been subjugated by, you know, by the nations. And the offspring of Ham, oh, it's going to say, ah, oh, so what do the offspring have to do with it? Why doesn't it just go through Ham? It goes to the Canaanites because of what the Canaanites did. You know, they started up with the Jews, right? And people came out of them as well, started up, you know, and they got demolished. Sometimes they were, sometimes they were stronger, sometimes weaker, right? Sometimes they had more power, less power. But in the end, in the end, they're not guiltless. You know, you got to say, but they came from the Father, so, you know, so they're cursed, but it's not just because of themselves, not just because of the sins of the Father, not because they're going in the, in the wrong direction. They did it to themselves. You come against the Jews, you're an enemy of the Jews, right? You know, so they're cursed, but it's not just because of themselves, not just because of the sins of the Father, not because they're going in the, in the wrong direction. They did it to themselves. You come against the Jews, you're an enemy of the Jews, right? What does King David say in Psalms? King David says, those that love you, I love. Those that hate you, I hate. Right? Meaning, talking about God. You want to go against God, there's a price. Against the Jews, you're an enemy of the Jews. Right? What does King David say in Psalms? King David says, those that love you, I love. Those that hate you, I hate. Right? Meaning, talking about God. You want to go against God, there's a price. There's definitely a price you're going to pay. You're going to say, but they don't have a choice. Of course they have a choice. They have a choice. Individuals have a choice. As a nation, they may not have a choice there. And it may not, it may, they may not matter, right? That's something like that's not going to change in the bigger scheme of things. You know, but logically speaking, you know, the, the, the grandson didn't have anything to do with it. Oh, but who's his offspring? Who's his offspring that starts up with the Jewish people? You got Egypt, you got the Philistines, you got the Canaanites later. So they have it coming because they fight against God's people. Can't do that. Oh, but they're going to do it anyway. They came up and did it, right? The other ones came up and did it. So again, sometimes they were more successful, less successful. But in the end, in the end, the offspring, the nation itself is not going to come out of it as a nation, which if I didn't have the Torah, if I'd be a, you know, I grew up in Massachusetts, most people know. If I wouldn't be an Orthodox Jew, I'd be a diehard liberal. Nothing to talk about. You know, I'd come up, you know, I'm a student of history. I'd come up with 100,000 reasons, you know, why this all exists. It might be all cream puff reasons, but, you know, maybe we'll come up with some, you know, some other reasons, socioeconomic other reasons. But the Torah tells me otherwise, right? The Torah, the Torah tells me this is going to be forever, right? And nothing happens, you know, nothing happens for no reason. So a reason. But the Torah tells me otherwise, right? The Torah, the Torah tells me this is going to be forever. Right? And nothing happens, you know, nothing happens for no reason. So a curse is not something you take lightly. But this is this is this is this is well beyond. Right? This is definitely well beyond. Right? This is this is a curse, you know, for the entire nation and who came out of them. I'm just gonna throw something out about a curse that people, you know, can take this with a grain of salt. You know, I you know, like I said, since I grew up in Massachusetts, so what's the big thing in Massachusetts? It's obviously about the Kennedys. Right? Now, the Kennedys, if you look at them as a family and what's happened. You know, two sons, you know, killed, you know, you know, a, a sister has a lobotomy. You got Ted Kennedy, you got all these things happen with this family. Now, it's known that the, you know, that the, the grandfather, Joe Kennedy, big, big anti-Semite, huge anti-Semite. So the story, I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's true or not. Supposedly two big, you know, one or two, you know, big rabbis, you know, he had the opportunity to save Jews in Europe during the war. And when he absolutely refused and said all kinds of things, you know, it's a rumor. I'm not saying it's 100% true, right? And you can, like I said, you can take it with a grain of salt. Some people say that, you know, some great rabbis actually cursed him. Like, like actually, I like gave him a curse. Now, you're going to say, okay, you know, I don't believe it happened. So even if it didn't happen, even if it didn't happen, look at this family. <laughs> this family, almost more than any other family, not that I did a study on other families, but this is a world-famous family, right? You know, so many things happened. You know, and Rose Kennedy lived to like 104. And she saw all this happen. You know, kids killed, grandkids, all kinds of crazy things. 
that happened in this family. You, you know, you want to say one thing happened, coincidence, maybe. Second thing happened, coincidence. If I have 10 things that happened in this family, you know, you know, John Kennedy Jr. Was on, you know, was in a plane, flying a plane, got vertical, went straight down. You know, what are the odds of that? I don't know. How many people go into, you know, know how to fly a plane, get vertical? You know, so there are a lot of things that happen that, you know, are just, you can't say it's a chance happening over here because there's just too many things, right? You know, if it's a handful of things, maybe, right? But if, if I got, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten things, you know, you know, that happens in the same family, very hard to say. You know, very, very hard to say that there's not something else, you know, you know, going on. Is it, the, you know, is it going to be the curse, you know, of, 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 of Ham and Cain is going to be forever? I, you know, I don't know about that. You know, I don't see any, you know, anywhere it says anything like that. You know, but at the same time, well, you know, when we see certain things, I'm not saying we're looking for curses, right? You know, and we're looking for, you know, families or people that seem to all, you know, always have it bad. Nothing good see, seems to come out of it. And, and usually that's never the case. Because even if someone, you know, you know, the, the, you know, they're they're doing bad or whatever. They don't they don't stay down for long. Then you know, maybe a generation, maybe two generations. You know, could be longer. You know, let's say. You know, but eventually, eventually, that person should get on their feet. You know, how many people came to America? They had no money. You know, they 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 struggled tremendously. You know, but a lot of people eventually made it. You know, they made it very successful. You know, at least when it came to business. So, you know, a person, even we have, down, you know, we have downturns, you know, no one's going to stay on top forever, right? You can have, you know, upturns, downturns, question is how we deal with it. But at the same time, even if a person's down, they're not down forever. You know, we, you know, we go up and down. It's like, you know, it's like playing ping pong. We go up and down. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. Sometimes it's very good. You know, sometimes a person hits it big. You know, so to speak, and, you know, for a number of generations, their kids, grandkids do all right, you know, et cetera. But then something else could happen. Or a person could hit it big and then lose it or lose a lot of it. A lot of different things that can happen. But no one stays static in one direction or the other. No one stays on top forever. No one stays on the bottom forever. It's just, a, you know, according to nature, according to nature, it doesn't happen in general. I'm not going to say it never happens, but in general, right, it never happens. Now, you know, if, if that's the case and you see, you see a nation or a group, a group of people that for the vast majority of time, over time, over centuries, millennia, they're always down. Seemingly, they're all, all, always down. It's not like, oh, they had better days, worse days. No, they're down and they're going to stay down. They're down. <laughs> they're down for the count. That's what it is. They're down for the count. Now, you would think, according to nature, as we mentioned, right? As we mentioned, according to nature, what should happen? They should get up at some point. Whether they're going to be fully successful, not fully successful, you know, you know, have sphere of influence, not, depends. Depends on a lot of different factors. But eventually, they should crawl to the surface. You know, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be crushed you know, every single second of every single day, that shouldn't be the case, right? It, it should change at some point, you know, and even when, a, you know, just on a personal note, even if a person's down and they seem, wow, you know, this happened and that happened, the other thing happened, you know, a person is not going to be down forever. It could be down for six months, could be down for a year, could be a number of years, could, you know, could be a lot of different things going on. But, uh, you know, God does not knock down a person forever. Usually, they you know th there are peaks and valleys. That's what it is. We go up, we go down. We don't you know we don't stay up, we don't stay down. In in this case, logically speaking, at some point, at some point over time, things should have changed. They should have changed in some way. Some way it should happen. But the fact that it hasn't, so now somebody got to write a whole dissertation and say why, and come up with any number of reasons, you know, why this has never happened. Now, maybe someone will do it one day. So I'll take what the Torah here tells me. The Torah here tells me they're going to be cursed, right? The Torah here says, we'll read it again as we're going to conclude here, right? It says that curses is Canaan, a slave of slaves. 
He'll be to his brothers. And blessed is Hashem, God Hashem, Cain is going to be a slave to them. So to the vast majority of the world, Torah tells me, no commentary here. Don't need commentary. Torah tells me they're going to be a slave. They're going to be a slave to most of the world. To the Germans, to the Celts, to the Wales, America, this, that. All these people we mentioned. We mentioned. They're going to be slaves to. And that seems to be forever. Torah doesn't tell me otherwise. Torah doesn't tell me it's ever going to change. The Celts, the Wales, America, this, that. All these people we mentioned. We mentioned. They're going to be slaves to. And that seems to be forever. Torah doesn't tell me otherwise. Torah doesn't tell me it's ever going to change. Right? So then someone's going to say, oh, as we mentioned last week, said by Ishmael, right? And they say, oh, he's a wild animal. You know, he's going to be a you know, wild ass of a man and what this and that. And that's going to be his descendants. Right? What about Sin Haver? Mixed up all the people. So the character traits don't go dormant over here. They're still there. And even if you want to tell me he mixed up all the people, you're going to say, okay. So he mixed up all the people. So where, where do these people come from? We know these are the descendants. This is where they, you know, even they got mixed up. Here we know. So, so if that's the case, if that's the case, even if you want to tell me it's not them. Okay, let's say. Let's say Sanchev mixed, mixed all the people. So we don't know who's who. We don't necessarily know who's who. Fine. Let, let's say that. So then, then the onus comes on someone else to say, what happened over here? Even we're going to say they're not the same people. Okay? So if they're not, what happened to this continent? You're going to have to come up with some explanation. You know, some explanation of what happened. Because this does not go according to nature. That is really the point here. Okay. Is that what we see according to history, right? You know, uh, you know, I was history major certainly when I went to college, you know, in university. So you know, kind of like history. So you look at history; doesn't make sense. Logically, it doesn't make sense. Now, some people may say it's not enough time. You know, we need another hundred years. Okay, right? If I live to another hundred years, I don't think it's going to change. <laughs> not going to change because this, this is what the Torah said. You know, but. We don't need another 100 years. Even another 50 years doesn't seem like it's going to change. How are you going to explain also, forget the wars and other things? What, what, what about weather? You're going to say they got the worst weather in the world? Okay, you got the Sahara Desert, you got other things. You know, you know, other places. You're going to tell me, you know, there's going to be so, you know, there's going to be so little rain. You know, people are going to be starving only in that part of the world and nowhere else. Ah, oh, that's, that's a proof for global warming. But what about other parts of the world? I mean, you know, this goes on ad nauseum. We could ask all kinds of things. You know, the dollar's good, other places go down. The dollar's up, other places go up. This, this stays the same, you know, in many ways. You know, it, it, even if it goes up, it doesn't go up, you know, significantly enough. You know, it's just one dictatorship after another. You know, one war after another. You know, famines, you know, and all that. You know, you want to tell me they got the, they, they picked the worst country to be in. Worst continent, worst weather. You know, it just happens to be totally hot. You know, and there's never any rain, never enough rain. Well, that's pretty bad luck throughout the millennium. <laughs> and that doesn't change. You know, no other continent seems to have that. Okay. You know, weather, you have ups and downs. You know, you got typhoons and you got tsunamis and, you know, earthquakes and hurricanes. And different. Okay. You have these things, but they don't decimate a whole country. They don't decimate the whole country. We don't have food. I don't say the, I'm not saying the entire place, right? But you don't have such a thing anywhere else. You know, okay, they, they, there's, a, there's a catastrophe. There's a catastrophe. They, you know, a lot of people die. Atlas has to change the map over here. Some places get wiped off the face of the map. Well, you know, a lot of people may die. But they move on. They move on. They don't stay down. They don't stay down for, you know, forever. You know, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Over here, you got to say, wow, what a coincidence. Worst weather ever. And the whole continent goes down because of it. Doesn't happen anywhere else. Again, there are a lot of different things. A lot of different things that logic, that, that nature will not be able to explain. Right? This, you know, this explains it. This shows that for so long and seemingly forever, it's never changed. And seemingly it will never change. Because, you know, this is exactly what the Torah says, right? And, you know, otherwise, otherwise, we don't have any other answers. We don't have any other answers because logically it doesn't make any sense. And according to nature, 
you know, it, it hasn't happened, you know, any, anywhere else. So we have to come up with, you know, some other, you know, some other explanation. And this is the explanation that the Torah gives. Very good, very good. Well, we are officially out of time, so I can't believe it. I stopped right you, at the minute. You stopped right on time. Good I'm job, good, good job. At this. And if it wasn't, listen, we're going to do something in the future. Uh, we're going to leave about uh, just a, maybe about a five or ten minute window open at the end of each future show. This is a recommendation by Andrea Weinberg. She's one of my uh, YouTube uh, moderators, okay. and a great idea uh, for specifically for last minute questions that people may have on Yeshua that you taught what you're teaching for the day. Um, there's a question that just popped in now, but unfortunately we don't have time to get to it right now because I've got another show, another show starting in 15 minutes. So Rabbi Moshe Schulman will be on I next. I can't even believe anyone from that topic is going to have any questions <laughs> at all. <laughs> I can't imagine. I see. I see. Uh, that's okay. Okay, cool. So we'll see uh, you next time, Rabbi, and see you all. Thank you all for subscri uh, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and uh, yeah, and that's it. And, uh